hey mom since i'm trapped in here and i'd like to do you know like some sort of fun activity do you think maybe you could finally make me my own boudoir pillow i'd really like it you know bonaparte that sounds like a great idea let me just do the intro first Hi, this is Gail with Bernina of Naperville, and you know, like as Bonaparte said, he's really bored because he can't come out here and really do anything because it is like minus six here. So let's learn how to do piping and gathering on our serger and stay inside where it's like warm and cozy. <laughs> well, we're going to get started by just a little bit of housekeeping about the big book of serging because this is a great resource for you if you want to kind of delve into more specialty techniques using your serger. I'm using the Bernina L890 this time, but a lot of these techniques can be used on many different models of sergers, including the L450, the L460 Berninas, and of course the B40 and the B60 range of overlockers by Burnett. So let's have a look at our gathering feet. Now I have attached the C18 foot to my machine and, that, and that's designed to put the stress on the back set of feed dogs and cause puckering or gathering in this case on your fabric. And that's also going to allow you to insert a flat piece of fabric that will not be gathered for simultaneously constructing your gathering and your sewing two pieces together at the same time. Now, we're not gonna do that for this application, but that's more of something that you could watch in our video where we made our gathered peasant skirt on the B64. That's on our YouTube channel. And I'll put a link in the handout that you can find in the description of this video to that video so that you have everything there conveniently. And yes, I did say that there is a little presentation deck that I have inserted in the description of this video that maybe helps you if you want to do this on your own. And once you put on your foot, you want to set up your Bernina L890 or even your other machines that are more mechanical with some different adjustments to your tension settings, your differential feed length, and your stitch length. So as you can see here on my L890, I have the left needle tension at nine, the right needle tension at nine. I have taken my stitch length all the way up to 4.5, and I've adjusted the stitch length all the way to two. Now, regardless of this being my L890, you can also use these same adjustments on your L860. And if you have a mechanical adjusting machine, you might heed these measurements as well or these settings as well on your machine. Another thing that you might want to do is go ahead and favorite this stitch. So we're going to place a little click right here on our heart and we are going to call this gather. And press enter and okay. Now, another thing that I want you to know about this is I, how did I come across these adjustments? And it really is trial and error. So you want to cut some extra strips of fabric so that you, you might need, not, you might not need to go as high on your tension settings because the gathering is all created based on how tight your needle tensions are, how long your stitch length is, and how much your differential feed has been adjusted. So anything over the adjustment of one, which is the default setting, is going to cause it to pucker. And the higher the number, the more puckers. And with the stitch length, that's the same as other types of you know, gathering feet that you might even find on your sewing machine, the longer the stitch will also yield a little bit more gathering. And having the upper tension tighter will also assist in that. And, you know, pretty much the default setting on the tension is four, 
for each needle. So you can almost find a range like anywhere between five and nine might be appropriate. But once again, we need to really check different types of fabric, different weights of fabric and things like that to see what's right. And once you get that adjustment just right, that's when I recommend if you have one of these nice machines with the touch screen, you can save your stitch. And people always ask after I say, save a stitch, well, how do I retrieve a stitch once I've saved it? Well, you simply just go to that heart button and pick the stitch that you have saved. You go through all of that process, boom, and there are your tensions all saved the way that you wanted them to be for the gathering stitch. Okay, so after you get your gathering foot on your serger and you get everything set up or the basic meat and potatoes of it, right? Let's talk about expectations because sometimes, let's face it, if we have a heavier cotton quilting weight fabric that has like some metallic stamped paint on it and you have your surged edge and you folded it in half so it's double-sided like this, you're not gonna get much of a gather out of it. In fact, you can see here this little diagonal seam here, I like to join them that way so there's less bulk. It's basically how you would sew like a binding, you know, join binding pieces together. Nonetheless, two layers of this isn't always gonna gather up and it's all dependent on the fabric. And, you know, unfortunately you can't reach through your monitor and feel this fabric, but this has a little bit of weight to it. Here is a cotton lawn and this cotton lawn is also, you know, it's, it's a lot lighter feeling than this is. And you can look here, you can see what a great job the gathering foot did on the two layers at one time. So, you know, just keep this in mind because this is dependent on the fabric that you're using. Now, another thing, if I were to make a ruffle out of one layer of fabric, regardless of the weight of the fabric, and I just wanted to gather up one layer, which actually is possible on this fabric. This fabric will gather with one layer, but you get that seam on the back and you aren't, you're not gonna wanna see that in your home deck project. So what I did is I ended up gathering both sides of a wide piece. Then I pressed, I had pressed this just like I pressed this fabric in half ahead of time, but then I repressed it after I did my gathers. And now I've got it evenly gathered and it's double-sided and it's heavier fabric. And I haven't had to switch to a ruffler attachment on my sewing machine or pulling threads, pulling those bobbin threads to make gathering. I thought it might be a nice touch to do a double ruffle with this. And this is where I'm gonna take another one of those heavier fabrics. I know it's not double sided, but I'm going to do single side ruffle where we're gonna see that seam, but I'm going to do a rolled hem on a single side. Then I'm going to ruffle this piece and then I'm gonna place it on top of this other ruffle that I made. And this is just gonna make Bonaparte's bougie pillow a little bit more bougie. And I'm using the soft lock thread and a three thread rolled hem. And of course we have multiple YouTube videos that you can watch if you wanna learn how to do a rolled hem. Hey mom, just checking, but uh, is my pillow finished yet? Okay, Bonaparte, I'm working on it. All right, so now we're gonna turn our attention to cording. Now we used polyester twisted cording in the following sizes for this demonstration. So I am gonna start off with our number C16S foot. Now this is also available in an L16 for your 860 and your 850, but the eighth of an inch is the size cording that you're gonna use for this small foot. And it tucks right under the foot perfectly. And then when you're making your cording, you're going to pull a longer tail of the cording under the foot so you have like a little handle back there to move this through the machine. Now, I know you're curious. I cut a two inch strip on the bias for this cording and I did join it together 
you know, how we would do a binding. And then I am trimming probably close to, I'd say about three eighths to a quarter of an inch off of this. But once again, that's because this is the eighth of an inch wide cording. So, you know, we've got a little bit more fabric to spare on cording this size, but two inches it was pretty good. Some of the tips that I might give you are to make sure that you stick to that four thread overlock stitch and that the wide stitch is going to grip a little bit snug against that cording. But I am also of the sort that actually make my cording casing around my piping like this on the serger and then I sew it on with the sewing machine. Now the next foot that we're using is very similar to the one you just saw, only this one is a large. So there's the L16L, and that's for the L850 and the L860. And then there's the C16L, that's the one I'll be using on my L890 because that's the one that's made for the L890. Now this is great for quarter inch piping, and this is also the piping that I've chosen for Bonaparte's pillow. These feet are see-through, if I didn't mention that or you didn't notice that, and that gives us a little bit more visibility as well. And um, so this one has an opening that is gonna be much larger for that quarter inch wide cording. And I can snuggle that right under that groove. And then once again, I'm gonna use my four thread overlock stitch to wrap this baby. And once again, this was bias, cut, two inches and joined together like binding and uh, it did the trick great. All right, have you ever dreamed of three feet in one? Well, your dreams have been answered because the XL piping foot is perfect for multiple sizes of piping and it goes from about three eighths of an inch to a half inch. Now, the only thing is you do have to remove the shank for the serger and put this foot on because the whole shank comes with it, but they do give you the T20 Torx wrench that you need to attach it. We're still gonna use that four thread overlock stitch. And for the half inch cording that we're using, we're going to pull that cording piece so we can accommodate the thickest possible cording. And then I have cut the cording this time three inches wide because, well, let's face it, we just need more fabric to cover this cording. But other than that, we just start. Now, those of you that are a little new at this, you might consider adjusting your presser foot pressure to one. So there we have it. There's our small foot with its coordinating piece there. And there is our large foot with that quarter inch piece. And then finally, our XL adjustable piping foot that was able to handle that half inch wide cording with the greatest of ease. And I might have misspoken earlier and said I cut my cording three inches wide. I meant the cording cover fabric, that bias fabric was what I cut three inches wide. Mom, seriously, is my pillow finished yet? I'm starting to get annoyed. So now that I have my single-sided ruffle, like this one, and my double-sided ruffle pressed, I'm going to just attach both of these ruffles together as one unit. But I need to add that piping first. And adding the piping, I have to tell you, oh my gosh, get ready for your bad self. I actually like to use my sewing machine to do this. So what I'll do is when I need to make piping, I'll make a ton of piping and I do that on my serger and then I'll set it aside. And then when I have cool piping, I'll just grab it and sew it on my sewing machine. So I'm gonna finish the rest of this project using my sewing machine. So even though I'm using a machine with a nine millimeter stitch capability, you can still use a number 12 bulky overlock foot, which I use for piping. This little cutout is perfect for the piping that we made on our serger. As you can see, that little cutout down there is going to glide right over our piping. And I'm just going to move my needle position to get it just into the right spot by leaving a tail down here at the bottom of the pillow, about like this. Switch out my foot and tell my machine that I'm using number 12 rather than number 12C. You can see that the needle is 
positioned in the center and we don't want it to stitch like that. So we want to move our needle position to meet the line that's on that foot, which is at position five. So this is my first pass at this. So I'm going to stitch placing my serger edge up against my little pillow piece here. And when I get to the end, I'm going to stop, have needle down engaged and pivot, pulling my piping, lowering my foot, and I kind of curve just a wee bit around, line up the edge and stitch. I just feel like I have a little bit more maneuverability on my sewing machine for this stage. So now, as we get close to this piece, we're going to get some scissors. And we're going to trim about like right here. And we're going to pull just a little bit of our cording out there. There we go. And then we're going to cut this and then we're going to take this, take this and fold it. Now you could take time to make a miter or whatever, but you know, for Bonaparte's boudoir pillow, he, he is not caring so much about mitered pieces. So now what we want to do is cut this right at the edge where we cut our cording. Tug that over and I'm just going to use a little pin to gently encourage. Lift your presser foot. Remove the pin. Gently encourage. And now we're going to add the ruffles. All right, so I measured the ruffle and I stitched them together just with a straight seam like this and like this and pinned them all along here. So now what we need to do is turn this over, adjust our needle position so that it's one click closer to the center and also closer to the cording itself. And then I've turned the work over and now we're gonna gently stitch all the way around. And we have one more layer to add to this after this, and that's gonna be our envelope back for the pillow. So this is almost a basting stitch, but not quite. And we just wanna reach under here and make sure everything gets nice and smooth as we go around these corners. And you wanna be just a needle width away from that other stitching line that we just performed. And don't forget to remove your pins or else you might have a problem. And that just about does it. We're going to crunch up that ruffle so that we can put it all towards the center. There's no puckers. There's no anything like that. I've prepped some envelope backing pieces that we're going to adjust and place into place and then pin and stitch around. And finally, Bonaparte is going to have his special bougie boudoir pillow.
All right, well, I hope that you enjoyed being in your warm sewing room, doing all of the fun, warm and fuzzy things. And you're thinking about us here in Chicagoland with these subarctic temperatures. <laughs> well, if you want to see more videos like this one or others, don't forget to check out our Bernina of Naperville YouTube channel. It's easy. It's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville. And there you can like, comment and subscribe. No outdoor activities necessary. <laughs> See ya.